We'll look ahead at predictions for the holiday shopping season and what those predictions mean for the overall economy. That's coming up here as we've got less than 10 minutes left in the trading week. We will go out here with our first or our third consecutive triple digit advance for the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, that irrespective of the five point advance that you see above me on the screen here. The Nasdaq also relatively strong today and very strong on the week. Up next here our big guy at Earnings Central all over Big Pharma. Bob, what's in the pipeline? Dylan in a word, a mess. Big Pharma is all over the map. You're not going to be able to tell who's going to win and who's going to lose without a program. We got your program. And then after the bell, reinventing Ma Bell, why the expected merger of AT&T and Bell South is now on hold. Big banks, big techs, those are just two of the sectors that we'll see lots of earnings action next week. Meantime, also going to be a busy one for big pharma. Bob O'Brien's got the play-by-play -play at Earnings Central. Bob. Yeah, and Dylan, it's not going to be one of those sectors that gives you a nice, clean read with double-digit earnings gains across the board. They're going to be all over the map. Johnson & Johnson will be first there. You're going to be able to, you're going to really need to drill down to be able to tell who's going to be a winner and who's going to be a loser next week. All right, thank you very much, uh, Bob. With less than five minutes left in this trading week and a huge earnings cycle coming down the pipe next week, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ go out here. Looks like less, well, less than 50 points from Dow 12,000. We'll be back with the closing countdown on the closing bell right after this. And then after the bell, long distance labor pains. Now, the growing union movement in China will affect the bottom lines of major U.S. companies. Closing countdown is sponsored in part by TD Ameritrade. the New York Stock Exchange. We are counting you down to the final bell of the week in the Dow, attempting a rally once again, putting it in position to close at a new record high. Part of this turnaround on the session, the surge that we saw midday in technology stocks. Names like IBM, the leader on the Dow, Hewlett Packard, Motorola and Intel, both set to report earnings next week. Financials also strong midday, helping the turnaround in the major averages. We are expecting a big week for financials as well next week with Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup all expected to report earnings next Next week, where we did see some weakness today, the home builder Centex coming out slashing its fiscal second quarter forecast, interest rates ticking higher, also having a negative effect on the home builders overall. But where we did see some strength in addition to tech and financials is in the gold stocks as well as in the oil stocks in the back of crude surge. There you have it. The closing bell rings on Wall Street. Another record close for the Dow, closing at 11,958 here on the NYSE. The U.S. Navy celebrating its 231st at first. Like United Security Bank shares rings the bell there. And there you have it. Closing bell continues now with Dylan Radigan. The U.S. stock market ending the session at a new record high. It is the sixth consecutive record in the last 10 trading days. A solid week for Wall Street, despite lackluster earnings news from GE and mixed economic data dragging the Dow down early in the day. The blue chip average settles out like this. You'll see gains across the board, modest ones today, but for the week, the index up just shy of a percent all in. There's 11 points today, third consecutive week of triple digit gains for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Over at the NASDAQ, a big winner for the week there, up 2%. You can see today here, a tenth of a percent added to that number. And finally, the S&P 500 adding a slight gain, up about 1% for the week. This is driven not only by uh, the obvious move we've seen in industrials, transports, and the like, uh, but also a surge in financials on expectations that at the very least the Fed will not be raising rates again for some time. And again, everybody thinks the next move will be a cut when you can debate uh, all weekend if you so choose. Beyond that, technology names, particularly large cap technology names, very strong on the week, and that helps things along and bear in mind we are going to get a basket of earnings from just those names come beginning of next week Google yeah you uh, Apple 
you can pick the company in large cap tech, Intel, uh, and you will get information on it tomorrow. Now, some pressure uh, on the stocks earlier in the day coming from a sharp jump in oil prices. The benchmark light sweet crude finishes out like this, up 1.2% at 58.57, but bear in mind for the week, it was still a weakening of prices all in. Oil moved higher after Norway, the world's third biggest producer, ordered two of its offshore platforms shut down for safety improvements. Those oil fields generate nearly 13% of that country's output. Traders also eyeing developments out of OPEC, an official from Qatar reportedly saying that they have a particular view on oil, again, uh, and that view one that speaks toward caution and analysis. Again, ultimately, they're just looking to get a sense of what they want to do with oil at OPEC, and, and uh, there's a split insofar as some of the nations that are involved there would like to see oil prices at around $60 a barrel, and then specifically Saudi Arabia would uh, seems to be more comfortable with the possibility of that coming down. So that's the story as far as oil is concerned. Uh, as we look at the market all in, it benefits from that uh, as the uh, we, the o overall picture of things continues to improve. We head to the floor of the exchange right now, Melissa Lee, to give us a sense of just what sort of improvement we're talking about. Melissa. Hi there, Dylan. You know, at the beginning of the session, we had a couple of factors in place that made the gains that we ended up seeing in today's session look improbable at the open. And they were, of course, the weaker than expected headline number on retail sales, as well as that jump in crude oil prices. Uh, uh, that we saw, but there was an internal uh, upward bias in the markets, and that really showed through with this late day surge that puts us just about 40 points away from Dow 12,000. The Dow today closing at a new record high for the week. Take a look at this. The Dow, even though it, it's, it's broke through all those intraday records, new closing high records, the Dow actually the laggard among the major indices, and the NASDAQ was actually the biggest winner up by more than 2%. And that, in fact, was what helped power the markets higher in today's session technology shares. In fact, take a look at IBM, Intel, Motorola, all of these stocks helping to lead that turnaround midday. Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, other ones uh, helping the gains here. Financials also uh, boosting the overall market. Citigroup, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Merrill Lynch, all of these stocks reporting earnings next week. So it will be a big week for the financials as a whole. And take a look at Regions Financials, a very strong performer on the, the day, posting very strong earnings results. The first of 15 regional banks to report setting a positive tone for the overall sector there. Meantime, where we did see some weakness, uh, home builders, a twofold reason here. One, we had that tick higher in interest rates, and also we had Centex coming out slashing its fiscal second quarter numbers, essentially saying that it still sees that trend of cancellation of orders in place. And in fact, they are seeing that buyers of potential homes are having trouble selling their existing homes, spelling trouble for the entire sector. So a downward trade there for the home builders. And uh, finally, Dylan, of course, we should address the fact that in addition to earnings next week, it is also a big week for economic data, PPI, CPI, as well as in industrial production all out next week. Dylan. So thank you very much. Turning to the economy, retail sales pulled back unexpectedly in September, four tenths of one percent. Forecasters had predicted a pickup of three tenths of a percent. But before you let that headline get you too concerned, much of the decline was blamed on falling prices for gasoline at the pump. So there was a plunge in the dollar value of gas.